that would be a great, uh, great scenario for doing a uh, webcast on uh, later on. So, Nick, please ping me over email and we'll set up a discussion on that. Maybe you can even record it and publish that. Uh, how would one go about updating an artist? Uh, not adding an artist, but updating an artist. And this is a question by K uh, Kenny Boo. And the answer is that you cannot update an artist in this fashion. This is, this is again, intentional because in this data set, artist does not, uh, does not really exist outside of the albums. Uh, okay, and let's see. Are there any reporting capabilities from uh, RavenDB? This is a question by Terry McGuire, I think. Uh, and the answer is that you get stuff like that. You can also get things like album by count sold. Uh, no, uh, sold albums. So here is an example of a report. Uh, okay, we don't have any sales here. So here is an example of a report index. This is basically a MapReduce index that does some reporting. This is interesting, it works, but reporting isn't uh, really what RavenDB is about. RavenDB comes with a SQL replication bundle, so you can take the data inside your RavenDB application and replicate that into a SQL, uh, into a SQL database and do the reporting from there. This is actually what we recommend for, even if you're not using a relation, a, if, you, if, if you're not using RevenDB, if you're using a relational database, you usually want to have your transactional store and your reporting store. And we can do reports, it just, uh, the main problem we do in reporting inside RevenDB is that it's not very flexible in runtime query. If you use a relational database, it can let you slice and dice the queries very efficiently. Well, it lets you slice and dice the queries. Efficiently or not, this is another matter. But uh, the most important part is that um, if you want your user to have a, the ability to slice and dice the data, you want to give them a tool that is meant to do that, such as an all-up database or a dedicated reporting database. Really, we will give you results very quickly, very efficiently, but it gives you the result in the format that you have defined it in the index. This is actually what happens in most situations. You don't just let users just run any random queries that you want against production databases, but I want to make sure that reporting capability exists, but they don't match to what you can do in relational database from that perspective. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm just... Ignoring. Yes, so Tado asks, so the use of MapReduce for RevenDB is a nice way of creating a view of just artists from inner data from the object. Yes. Uh, indexes also allow you to project only some information from, uh, the do from the document or even allow you to page through the object entities or through object uh, values independently. For example, if we have a collection inside the document and we, want it, and we wanted to get only the first five items from it stuff like that. Uh, so is there a good MVC hopefully sample application that uses the RevenDB sample data? The answer is that uh, this is a question by Hanan Bronstein and the answer is that yes there is a sample application unfortunately there is one problem with that we haven't updated recently. Uh, Itamar, where is that sample application? I think you have it in your repository. Yes, it's a Monegit Hub account. Okay. It's still on them. Okay. So. Okay. So. Uh, okay. So here it is. So this is. Uh, so this is the sample application that uses the sample data. That said. I wouldn't recommend you to look at that application as the sample application. Just, uh, mostly because mostly because this uh, this haven't been updated recently. What I do suggest you to look at is a this sample application. 
okay? And this is the Raccoon Blog Sample Application. The Raccoon Blog Sample Application actually run this website. Okay, so as you can imagine, this is a fairly important thing for me to, to do. Uh, so Stacy asks, is the by design removal of artists as an aggregate just to encourage better document design, or is it due to limitation in RavenDB? No, this is absolutely a design decision that we have made just to show off features in RavenDB. This is not due to any limitation. RavenDB actually have a lot of uh, abilities to handle references. It doesn't do phone keys, but it have a lot of ability to handle references. But uh, that was just a design decision to show off some specific features. And with that, I think I'm going back to my schedule presentation. Anyway, so all of the discussion about MapReduce, and we haven't actually told you what multi-MapReduce is. So let me do something about that. So what we have here is an empty project, and we're going to start using that project with RevenDB. We're just installing that, uh, we're installing RevenDB through NuGet. And I intentionally do this live call in front of you just to show you how easy it is to use RevenDB. So we initialize the document store. Document store is like the session factor in an Hibernate. And let's create some entities. Anyone want to suggest some entities for us? Just put them in the questions. Any entities? Okay, airplane. Airplane it is. So, airplane, an airplane has a wingspan. Safety record. Okay, good enough. And and we use RevDB mostly through the session. And let's just new airplane. Wingspan is two, and safety record is whatever. And finally, we want to call save changes. Interest note about save changes. Save changes is transactional. So it either fully succeeds or, or doesn't work at all. And let me just pull something. I just want to have this NLO config which will allows us to actually see what RevenDB is doing. So now we are executing this, and you can see that they've actually, uh, let me just reset the database, so we work on fresh data. Mm. Okay, so now, we are creating a new airplane, and let's look at this airplane in here. Yes, I said that, so I have to restart. And you can see that I have this new airplane here. What is, uh, what is the command to restart the database? So, if you are using a RavenDB from the command line, you can just issue a uh, issue reset and it will restart itself. Because I'm running in in-memory mode, what you will see is that when I'm restarting, there are no documents in the database. Okay, so let's just move it over here. And let's just recreate. So here we are, here we are now. Now, I want to do some things, so let's say session.load. Uh, airplane, airplane slash one. 
safety record now is let's see what's going to happen now you can see that two things have happened uh, let me just so you can see the code and the result at the same time so what you can see now is that the first thing that we have done is load the airplane one from the server and then we put it back something that is very important to understand is that we have not loaded a, a, we have not told the session that it needs to save the airplane back nevertheless if we are going to go here uh, you can see that the value have changed and the value have changed because we no longer have to worry about because sorry value have changed because we have modified it in here and this the session implements the unit of work pattern and the unit of work pattern basically means if I loaded that value I'm going to track it and eventually I'm going to save it to the database when you call save changes uh, Thomas is asked how do you dispose the session without using and basically session has a dispose call on it, you call it and it's get disposed. Uh, what does the log on, so Jonathan Cartis asks what does the log, uh, end log config looks like and this is the end log config, everything in here will be available as part of the webinar notes, you don't have to worry about that. This is just throw it to the console basically. Uh, so Nick asks, what is the recommended lifespan of document store for long running services? For example, in Rhino service bus uh, service. And the document store is a singleton and should live as long as the application is alive. So this is basically, you start the application, you create the document store, when the application shuts down, you shut down the document store. A session is per request in in a web service in web scenarios. In service bus scenario, it's per message or per message batch. Per message batch. A thing is asking: Is it possible to set the ID on the client side or get it when the object is saved? And the answer is yes. You can either explicitly set the value in here the string ID in here, or you can, uh, so let's create, a safety record. Okay. So not, notice what we have done here. We are saving a new item, and immediately after we call store, even before we have a, even before we have a call the database, we have a value for it. You might have noticed that the new value is 1025, and this is because by default RevenueB implements the high-low protocol. This is out of scope for this, but it's important to just figure out how this works. Yes, you could make it use a grid, but just telling this is a grid. It still uses this convention of airplane slash and then the grid. I strongly discourage you from using grids because, frankly, they are absolutely unreadable. I mean, seriously, has anyone ever seen this this grid before? You cannot, and it's really really annoying. And okay. So let's see. Uh, is there a way to so Anas is asking? Is there a way to circumvent loading of a document or entity before updating it and just issue an update directly? And yes, but not through the uh, session API. So if you look, the session API is just six methods: delete, load, query, save changes, store, and advance. And advanced actually allows you to do some other stuff, but it also allows you to go to the database command. And the database command allows you to do things like explicitly update whatever you want, or even issue an, an update of, let's just, you know what, let's just do something fun. Airplane slash one. 